Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be doing coloured attacks, something that you've been asking for a really long time. Now as most of you know, these blue attacks, if you don't move when they collide with you, don't hurt you. So you can stay still and they will pass harmlessly through you. And later on, we'll even program in orange attacks, which are the reverse. If you are moving, you can move through them and they won't damage you. But if you are staying still when they collide with you, then they will damage you. So now that we know what we're doing, let's get straight to the code. So first things first, we need to go to the heart sprite. And look around until you find the when green flag clicked, where we've noted projectile collision next to it. Now we're actually going to take the collision code out of here and move it to the attack sprite, because then the attack sprite will be able to run different types of code depending on what color the projectiles are. So we need to take out this entire if then else. We need this invulnerable code to go back in, but we don't need it to be an if then else. So get out an if then, move invulnerable more than zero, and get all the code that was inside there and move it here. Now we've got our if player current HP less than one. So we might as well keep this here and we'll run this in fact before the invulnerable code. So if ever we run out of HP, then we lose the game. So we don't have any collision in here, but we do still have code for death and invulnerability. So let's rename projectile collision to death and invulnerability. Now we're going to send this if touching attack code into our Gaster Beam Sprite. We're also going to send it to the attack sprite later, but the Gaster Beam is going to be a bit easier. So drop that into your Gaster Beam, and we shouldn't need any of this, so we can get rid of it. Now before we go across to the Gaster Beam Sprite to put in some code there, we also need a way to figure out if the heart is moving or not. Now if we go to Define Evade, we can put in a variable that changes depending on whether the heart is moving. So go to variables and click on make a variable. We're going to call this moving and we're going to click for this sprite only. Press OK. And we're going to set moving to no underneath define evade. So now, during every frame of our game, at the beginning of the frame, we say, are we moving? No. And then, if we do move, we're going to switch that to yes. So, if we look down until we find our move x, y, all we need to do is put a set moving to yes underneath if key pressed. Now let's give this a little test to make sure it's working. Now, watch this variable here, heart moving. As I move, it switches to yes, and as soon as I stop moving, it switches to no. Now, the one exception is that it doesn't yet calculate our jumping, it doesn't yet calculate our velocity, but that's fine because we have the velocity variable that can help with that, so we'll use that later. Okay, let's head across to our gaster beam and make a start on adapting our collision code there. Okay, so here it is if touching attack, we're going to make a my block to contain this. We're going to click on make a block. We're going to call this heart collision. Press OK, and then put our define heart collision on top here. Now we want our heart collision to run during this repeat and during this repeat. So get across heart collision and put it here, and then put it here. Now we need to change this if touching to if touching heart. And we don't need this or. But there's one more thing we need to add. We need to add in some code about the heart in vulnerability. So above this broadcast screen shake, we're going to put if invulnerable more than zero. And in here, we're going to put stop this script. Now stopping this script will only stop the code that's underneath define heart collision. The rest of the code here will work fine. So this is a really useful way to create exceptions for when we don't want to continue to the end dealing the damage to the player. At this point there's also another little benefit that you can use. Now that the damage code 
is in the Gaster Beam and not in the Heart, you can change how much damage specifically just Gaster Beams deal. So you can change this number here into a minus 3 or a minus 10, however much damage you want a Gaster Beam to deal. Once you're happy with that, drag this entire Define Heart Collision into our Attack Sprite. And also, if you like, you can rename this invulnerable variable to heart invulnerable, just so it's nice and easy to remember what this variable does. Now that's done, let's head across to the attack sprite and put in some code there for our collision. Now drag define heart collision somewhere near where we've got our when I start as clone code. We're going to make a bunch of changes to our when I start as clone code. That's going to make it a lot easier to control different types of attacks and different colors of attacks. So first thing we need to change. Up till now, all our different clones move in different ways depending on what costume they have. The stars move a certain way, the waves move a certain way, the gravity attack moves a certain way and anything that has a costume number of less than four, so one, two, and three, all move in a straight line. This has been fine up till now, but it's going to get far too difficult to work with once we have things like blue bones or orange waves. So let's create a variable to keep track of our movement types. Click on make a variable. We're going to make this for this sprite only, and we're going to call this movement type. Press OK. Now let's update this movement code. So first thing, if costume less than four, we can replace this with if movement type equals straight. So now anything that has the movement type variable straight will move in a straight line. First it moves until it's no longer touching the edge of the screen, then it moves until it touches the edge of the screen again. Next we need to replace this if costume with a if movement type equals star. Now I'm going to rename this to spin because that way we can use this movement type for other types of projectiles, not just stars. We could have all sorts of spinning projectiles. Let's scroll down and see what else. All oh, this is nice and straightforward. We'll just get this movement type equals wave. And then if movement type equals gravity. Okay, that's all looking a lot neater. So now we have our fancy new movement type variable. We need to make sure that we set that variable under our attacks. So look around for define scatter and underneath that we need to put in a set movement type to straight. Now make sure this is spelled exactly the same way as you've spelled it in your other code. Make sure it's spelled correctly otherwise it won't work. So we'll take a set movement type straight and we'll put it underneath spear as well, define spear, because the spears move in a straight line. Now underneath define star, remember I called that movement type spin. So let's put in set movement type to spin. Underneath wave, we put in set movement type to wave. Underneath long, this is another one that moves in a straight line. So we should be able to set movement type to straight. Now we need to make sure that we've also got a movement type for our gravity slam attack. So look around for gravity slam and let's get out set movement type to gravity. Okay, now that should be all of them. So let's head back to our when I start as clone code. Now we need to make sure that our heart collision code gets run inside all of our different movement types. Inside our movement type equals straight, let's put a heart collision here and a heart collision here. Now if movement type equals spin, let's put a heart collision right underneath the repeat put one underneath the repeat until inside our movement wave. And then let's put one underneath this repeat here and this repeat here for our gravity movement. 
Now give your project a test, make sure that nothing's missing, make sure that everything's moving the way it should be. And if it's not, then probably you've spelled something wrong or some of the code is out of place. Okay, so I'm taking damage again. So the collision code is working. All of the projectiles are moving the way they're supposed to. So I'm pretty happy. Now let's get our blue attacks working. For that to work, we're going to need a new variable. Go to variables and click on make a variable and call this color. Tick for this sprite only and press OK. Now we already have this if here, which stops the script if the heart is invulnerable. All we need to do is create another if that will stop the script if we are not moving and the color of this projectile is blue. So first, let's get out an if color equals. Now we can type out the entire word if we want, but I'm just going to put in a capital B for blue. Now we need to check this variable heart moving, but that's actually a for this sprite only variable. So we can't actually access it from our variables code here, but there is a way around this. Let's get out a sensing block and get out backdrop of stage. Drag that out and change stage to heart and now you'll be able to access the moving variable of heart so inside here we need if moving of heart equals no but remember that wasn't enough was it we also need to check our velocity so copy this if and change the moving into velocity and change this no into zero and then all we need is a stop this script. So if the color is blue and the heart is not moving and has zero velocity, we need to stop the script and not deal the damage that happens afterwards. There is one more thing we need to do though. When the heart is red, it stops worrying about the velocity. So this velocity variable, this number, could end up being stuck on like nine or 10 or some number. And when the heart is red, it won't take that number back to zero. So we need to manually code that in. Go to your heart and look around for define red soul movement. And let's make sure that when we're in the red soul, we have set our velocity to zero. Now let's head back to our attack sprite and let's put in some new costumes. Now I'm just going to copy this costume bone and change the color of it from white to a pale blue. That looks good. And then I'm just going to rename bone two to bone and then a capital B. Now I'm gonna do the same with all of the other projectiles just in case I want to use them in the future, but you don't technically need to make them if you don't plan on using them. Okay, that's all of the costumes done for me. Make sure they're all named correctly if you plan on using them in the future and let's head back to the code. Now for the final part, we're going to be creating a new attack. And this is going to be an attack that might be very, very useful. It's going to just create a projectile and fire it in a direction. And you can decide what type of projectile it is and what color that projectile is. So let's find a space and let's click on my blocks, make a block. And we're going to call this projectile. Then add an input for the costume, then text add a label, X, Y, D, and then add in three inputs for X, then Y, and then direction. Text add a label, we're gonna type in C, then add an input, this is going to be the color, and then finally, we're going to add text, for a W and then add an input and call this input weight. Press OK. Now let's put some code underneath this. Let's start off with motion and get out a go to X and then Y. Let's point in direction. Then let's set movement type to straight. If you want, you could create an additional input to be able to change this. But most of the time, your projectiles just want to go in a straight line. 
Um, then we'll set the color variable to our color input. Now let's go to the looks category and get out go to back layer and let's switch costume. Let's get out a join and we'll join our costume with our color. Now, if you run into problems with this, if you run into any glitches, then you might find that if you put a switch costume to costume right before this, we'll fix some of those glitches. Otherwise, this should work okay. And all we need to do is then create a clone of myself and wait, wait seconds. So now all that remains is to test this new attack. Let's look around for our if mode equals evade. Let's pull this out for now and let's put some of our new projectile attacks in here. Now, as you're making these attacks, remember you can always click on them to give them a test. There we go. I'm just going to be making these attacks start in the middle of the screen, point downwards, and I'm mixing it up with the different uh, costumes and colors. Let's see what it looks like when we start the game. Okay, the attacks have started, and you'll notice that when the white attacks hit us, they hurt us, but if we're not moving, the blue attacks don't. But see what happens if I try and move into the blue attacks? There we go. And if I switch the heart to the blue heart, let's see what happens with the velocity. So if I jump into the blue attacks and I'm falling, then we take damage. Excellent, everything's working. That's all the time we have for this week. Next week, we're going to get into orange attacks as well as updating some other parts of our attack code. Subscribe and ring the bell to see when that next episode is ready for you. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.